Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Got the D-Man here, and I'm glad you could join me today, as always. And it's a cloudy day today in St. Louis, Missouri. Looks like it's going to rain today. Today's topic is, before I start, smash that like button and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We have a video coming out every day that I know will be of value to you. Today's topic is going to be success. And it's going to be brief because I don't have a lot of time. I have to get going this morning. But what is success? <clears throat> Excuse me. What success is to you and what success is to me could very well be two different things. So many people in the U.S. equate success with money and material possessions. And granted, that can be part of it. But money and material possessions without soundness of mind is hardly success. But on the other hand, if you're living in a cardboard box, it's hard to have soundness of mind. The reason I brought this topic up because I was listening to one of the people that, uh, one of the YouTube uh, content creators, and I really like his stuff, but he was talking about success in relation to Someone else was promoting a certain uh, practice that they did, and they said uh, that if you did this practice, you would be very successful, that success stemmed from that. And he stated that he coached and knew many millionaires, and he didn't know any of them that practiced that. So how could you equate success to this certain practice? But this guy that I'm listening to, that, that I like, he's got really good content, was equating success with money and material possessions. Like, that is what success is. I like the definition Earl Nightingale uses, and I don't think he coined the phrase, or maybe he did, success is the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. I'll say that again. <clears throat> Success is the progression of a worthy goal or ideal, okay? It's moving in the direction of a worthy goal or ideal. You notice he doesn't say when you get there or when you have a lot of money or when you get this girl or when you get married or when you have children or when you reach the moon or when you build that skyscraper or when you have 100,000 followers. It's the progressive realization of a worthy goal or ideal. And it has to be a worthy goal or ideal because otherwise you don't feel, you don't feel good about it. You don't have that peace of mind, that soundness of mind. And I've learned in my life, I have set many goals and I have achieved many goals. And the, the joy is definitely in the journey, to coin an old phrase. It's so true. Many times I have reached a goal, and there's a certain excitement or exhilaration once you achieve that. For me, it was usually in sports. But it has been in other things. But that is short-lived. It may last a day, it may last a few hours, but then you have to set another goal. Think about everything you want today. If you had it all right now, what would you do? Think about that. What would you do? Well, of course you would enjoy it, but you would have to set another goal. Everyone has goals. If I think back to when I was young or younger, I had goals then, but it was just to get high every day <laughs> or maybe to go out and party on the weekend. I worked all week so I could buy beer and go out and party all weekend. Or just to get high every day, see if Joe had some weed or whatever so we could get high. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I did have goals. They weren't worthy goals or ideals, but they were goals. Some people have the goal of just getting through the day so they can go home and watch TV. But they don't feel fulfilled in their life. That's why I believe Earl Nightingale said, a worthy goal or ideal. Everything you have today is something you wanted yesterday. 
So in a way you could say you are successful if you are achieving, if you have worthy goals or ideals, even if they're daily goals. Maybe your goal today is to go out and help someone. That definitely is a worthy goal. Goals need to be written down. What do they say? The, the infamous they, whoever they are, less than 5% of the people have written goals. It may be even lower than that. I have written goals. It's amazing. I've tried to get people to write their goals down and, and it's like they're afraid to do it because when you write it down, it becomes real. It becomes tangible. You can see it on paper. It's just not floating around in your head because when you write it down, it's almost like you have to do something about it. You actually have to take action. It's sitting there before you, right in front of you. So that's about goals, but what about success? Is success money and material possessions? Of course, that is a form of success if you view it that way. Was Mother Teresa a success? Many people, probably millions, would say she was. Did she have a lot of material possessions or money? I don't think so. So how can you say that she's successful? If your standard for success is money and material possessions, then she was a failure. But I don't think anyone would agree with me that she was a failure. So success is what success is to you. Don't ever judge your success by someone else's standards. Now, with that being said, do I like money and material possessions? Of course I do. Now, I live in an old house. It was built about 1875. I love this old house. I have statues out front. I have fountains. I have, it's beautiful to me. It's definitely unique. There's not another one like it around. But to some people, they would say, God, I wouldn't want to live in that old house. But I love old houses. It has a lot of character. It's been through many storms. It could probably take a direct hit by a tornado. <laughs> well, maybe not. But I'm going to tell you this. When the wind blows, the shingles don't come off. The siding doesn't blow off like these new houses with the vinyl siding that are beautiful. But they just don't have the, the sturdiness that this old house has. But also, it probably doesn't take as much uh, electric to heat their house every month like it does mine. These old houses are, they have like a draft. In the wintertime, you can see the, the curtains blowing. That's with all the windows closed. But the point I'm making here is, to me, that is what I wanted. So to have this house back after I lost it in a divorce in 2000, uh, to me, that is a form of success. I never thought I would be back here. I came back and finished the uh, yard with the statues and the rock walls and the fountains and all that that I had started many years ago. So to me, that is success. To someone else, they may look at that and say, God, I wouldn't want to be in that old house. So there are many forms of success. You have to decide what success means to you. And success, as far as material possessions or money without soundness of mind, because I've had money and no soundness of mind, and I've had very little money and soundness of mind. And I'm telling you, soundness of mind cannot be bought. I had a situation the other day at work where I was doing this uh, deck for these people, and the, where I get my paint, or I bought stain this time, they gave me the wrong color, and I started out with the wrong color of stain. Okay, so when I started, I thought it was a, l a little dark <clears throat> compared to what she had on there, but I wasn't sure what she picked because the color didn't have a, uh, the color name she gave me didn't have a chip where I could view the color. So I sent her a photo of it, and she said she liked it, looked good, okay? So I left for the weekend, and it was there, and she's seen it. Then I came back and uh, I brought one of my helpers, uh, one of my employees with me. Then I had to get another gallon of stain. So I got the gallon, we went out on the job and I opened it up and it was the wrong color or so I thought. So I took it back to the store and she, or yeah, the girl, they opened it up and they said, this is the right color, it's the same color. I said, well, it's not what you gave me the first time. Long story short, 
they gave me the wrong color the first time. So, but she liked it, okay? She didn't know any difference, the homeowner. So what do I do? Do I tell her or do I not tell her? Well, she paid for a certain color that she picked out. And that's not the color I started with. Even though I had given her, even though I had uh, taken a photo and sent it to her while I was doing it, and she said she liked it. It was a small job, about a thousand dollars, no big deal. Okay, so do I tell her or do I not tell her? Well, I know that it's not what she paid for. Even though she liked it, I need to tell her. <clears throat> so afterwards, she said, who, I, who do I make the check out to? I said, I told her, make it out to Daniels Brothers. I said, but go look at it and tell me if you like it. So she went back there and looked at it. Come back and said, yeah, it looks great. I said, well, let me explain to you what happened with the stain. I said, I don't think that's the color you picked out. Okay, and she says, well, that's okay. She said, I, I like the color. And we talked about it and we both agreed that it went actually better with the deck on the outside. There was a, a, another deck next to the deck I was doing and this corresponded this color very well with that. The point is, had I not told her, she never would have known. She never would have known that she didn't get the stain that she picked out. Now, a lot of people would say, then why did you tell her? Because I knew, and that would take away my soundness of mind. Is my soundness of mind worth $1,000? Yes, it is. There are many times in my life when I didn't have soundness of mind. And I'm sure you can think of times when you didn't either. What would you have paid for that? Maybe you went to the doctor and got some medication because you just had no peace of mind. And I'm not saying that that's not a good idea sometimes. I've taken medicine in my life. I don't take anything now and I haven't for a long time. But there have been times when I've been overwhelmed and I just wasn't sure if I could make it and I did seek relief in that form. But you have to work through your problems. Otherwise, this just masks the pain or the emotional distress or the frustration you're feeling. And that is a signal to you that you need to change something. So my recommendation is if you go that route and take the medication, Always work on yourself and get some therapy or some kind of group counseling, something to, to work on the problem because these medications just uh, cover up the problem or, or soothe the pain of the problem. It's like covering up your oil light on your car. Oh, nothing wrong here, Mom, until your, until your oil light, until your car breaks down. But what I'm saying is peace of mind is vital. It's vital to your health, to your happiness, to the happiness of those around you, to your success, to your future success, to your continuing success in whatever direction you want to go. So regardless, you have to be true to yourself. So in this case, I had to tell her. And I had to be willing, which I was, to say, you know what, you don't have to pay me. Because I did not give her what she paid for. Even though she was happy, that wasn't what she paid for. But she was okay with it, she paid me, everything was great, worked out fine. I was more concerned that she'd want me to do it over again because it was a very difficult deck and uh, I didn't really bid it high enough to start with. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't have to do that. The point of all this is success to you may not be what success is to someone else. Don't judge your success by someone else's standards. And success without soundness of mind is really not success at all. If you can't be at peace with yourself, with what you have, regardless of what it is, whether it's millions of dollars, um, land, whatever it happens to be, that is not success. Peace of mind is priceless. It's a priceless gift. Many people pursue it in many other things. Many per people pursue it in illegal drugs, alcohol, the list goes on ad infinitum. So that's something for you to think about today. Thanks for joining me and I will see you tomorrow.